Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to Apron Strings. Man, we've got a lot of new people crowded in this kitchen with us, and I'm thankful for every one of you. Thank you for subscribing and watching. Thank you for your comments. I just love to talk to y'all. So, appreciate the comments, and I answer every comment. Every once in a while, there'll be one that I can read, but it will not let me go to respond to it. That's the only reason you won't get an answer when you comment on my videos. Most of the time, there is a recipe card at the end of the video. A lot of people want to know where it's at. Well, that's because you quit too soon. But I do try to give the recipe every time. So, y'all are just so welcome to Apron Strings. Please share my videos and my channel with your friends and on your social media. When you watch a YouTube right below the picture, um, it'll say share and then it'll let you share it to your your Facebook or whatever social media. I would appreciate that. That way I can reach an audience that otherwise I couldn't reach. Now we did the Jacqueline Kennedy um, noodle casserole and well, today we're going to do John John Sketty Pie. So I hope y'all enjoy it. It's a, The book says that you can make it ahead and freeze it and have it ready to serve. Or, you know, just serve it, bring it out of the oven. Kids love it because it's just, it doesn't have meat in it. So, it's very, it's kid friendly. Guess that's why John John loved it. So, um, anyway, we're going to get going on it. It shouldn't take too long to make it. Might take a little bit longer with all my talking. It's dreary today in Texas and our ground's drying up just enough that you can walk on it without mud squishing up. And we're supposed to get another couple of days of heavy rain. That don't make me very happy. I'm ready to plant some seed. Get all those huge leaves out of my backyard. The white oak trees make big old leaves. And there's about a gazillion of them back there. And uh, I've just been letting the chickens hop up in my raised beds and scratch. I know they're eating the worms. But I'm going to go and sprinkle my uh, peat moss that I want to put in there to keep them moist. And let them just... They can till it for me. So if it doesn't start raining here in a little bit, I'm probably going to go do that and let them start working that for me. And then I'll have to do something when I plant where they can't get over there to my beds or it won't do me any good to plant because I think that's easy eating. Okay, our scatty pie is just going to have 12 ounces of cooked spaghetti. This actually makes two pies. So you can get you some little throwaway pie pads and put it in your freezer if you don't mind using the little tin pans or do it in a regular pie plate. You could probably do it in a 9 by 13 casserole but I'm going to go ahead and do the pies just like the little book told me to do. So we're going to boil 12 ounces of spaghetti and I'm going to melt 3 tablespoons of butter and toss with the spaghetti when I get it done. So I'm going to get my water in my pot, get my spaghetti boiling and melt my uh, butter then we'll bring it out, put it together, pop it in the oven, and have it ready to go. I'm not going to freeze one. If you're going to freeze it, I would assemble it, freeze it, and bring it out and bake it. But you can do it either way because I like spaghetti with just marinara sauce on it. So I'll cook me uh, a batch, and I, then I vacuum seal it in portions and freeze it. And on the days that I work... I can just bring a package out, heat it up, put it in my thermos, and take it to work with me. So either way, it's going to work to freeze it before or after you melt the cheese on it. So let me get some water in my pot here and add a little bit of salt. You know, I told you if you want to season your pasta, you need to season the water that you're cooking it in so it'll absorb some of it because that's the only way you're going to get any seasoning in there. But I don't put my salt in until my water starts boiling, so it'll dissolve real good. Then I add my pasta to it. That's probably too much. It's probably going to boil over a little bit. It's done that before, and I know how to clean up a mess. So, I'm going to do a video pretty soon. I've got some new gadgets that I haven't showed y'all. So, I'm going to do a video with a few of my favorite gadgets and my new, got this new neat thing that, Angie from over at Angie's Pantry told me about. So, if y'all hadn't watched her video, she got some good bread and some good recipes over there on her channel. And there's another channel. She watches me. She comments often. 
and she cooks kind of like I do, and her channel is smaller, and she would love for it to grow. It's the Cozy Cottage Homestead. So if y'all go over, she's ordered aprons from me several times. Go over and subscribe to her channel, help bump her numbers up, and watch her videos. That would be awesome. I'd appreciate that, and I know she would. So today, I'm just telling you about good people and making good food. Y'all know, the, what do you remember the most about John John Kennedy? I think everybody remembers him saluting his daddy's casket when it went by. That was just heartbreaking and sweet, and that's his memory. And then, of course, you remember how good-looking the little stinker was when he grew up. But that's my memory of John John, and the one where they show him hiding under President Kennedy's desk. That was cute, too. I think they were... They had their kids around them, and I mean, he was in the Oval Office with his dad on a lot of pictures that they showed, and of course, his mother was just an awesome mother. Jackie Kennedy is one of my favorite women of all time. I've already told y'all that. But anyway, I'm going to, uh, in this recipe, I'm jumping around like a flea at a flea market, huh? In the recipe, you can either use cottage cheese or ricotta. And today, I happen to have ricotta because I used it in another recipe, so I'm gonna use that. Cottage cheese is cheaper. And if you don't like the texture of your cottage cheese, get your immersion blender or put it in your processor and whiz it up and smooth it out some. But this is gonna have my usual seasoning, onion and garlic powder. John John didn't request that, Gay did. And some Italian seasoning. You just need bought marinara sauce, bought spaghetti sauce, parmesan or Italian blend cheese, and mozzarella. And if you wanted to add meat in it, you could put a layer of meat or add meat to your spaghetti sauce. But I'm going to do it with no meat. I don't have to have meat. I eat it. Um, you know, I'm not a vegetarian, but I'm perfectly happy with a plate of vegetables, which yesterday I cooked collard greens. Some of them I grew. That dumb freeze we had killed most of them, but I got some. So I bought me two bunches at the store, and then I went out there and cut what I could, and I had a big old pot of collard greens, and I cooked some uh, pinto beans, and I cooked some candied yams, and I made a big pan of cornbread, and I had meatloaf left over from Sunday in the icebox, but we didn't even have any meat. We just ate those vegetables and cornbread like a bunch of pigs. It was good. So I don't have to have meat to be happy. So what I'm going to do is make these two scatty pies, and I'm, gonna, I'm working a couple of days this week, so I'll take some in my lunch with some salad, and I'll be one happy substitute teacher. When my water gets to boiling, I'm going to get my spaghetti in, but I am going to melt my butter. I've got to get it to melting so I can toss it real quick with the spaghetti and I don't have to let it melt up with the hot, it will, with the hot spaghetti, but I try to follow directions every now and then and it said to melt my butter. So I'm going to mind. I'll be right back. I'm just going to put it in a one cup measuring cup because I don't want it. I got a little fourth of a cup one like this that should hold it, but um, I'm not going to take any chances. I'm going to put it in this and get this ready. I got plenty of time. My water's not even boiling yet. All right, I'm going to let y'all rest a minute, and I'm going to get on with my rat killing, and I'll be back when the water's boiling. I'll put the spaghetti in. You know, if you're in a hurry for your water to boil, if you put a lid on it, it speeds it up some. Well, my butter, I heard it pump, and it didn't matter if I put it in a big old cup. It still got all in the microwave. I gotta clean that up. But uh, I put my lid on there where that'll get done quicker. Some of my pots don't have the silicone wrapped handles, and they get hot. Sometimes I forget to get a rag to pick it up with, or, get, or a pot holder. And I've told you before, but I've got some new people, so I want y'all to know about this. Lavender oil. And this is from Young Living. Uh, I order from Young Living. And uh, I can leave you a link if I don't forget if you want to order some. But if you burn yourself, if immediately you'll put lavender oil on it, and then maybe 30 minutes later put you some more. You know, subsequently, 
hour or two down the road, put a little more on it, you won't even have a blister. It won't be sore. It will fix it. And I've told this and several people have commented that they were so glad for that tip because it worked for them. Hey, I don't like to burn and hurt myself. So right quick, I grab lavender and put it on. Also, if you have allergies, and I use this, but sometimes I still have to take allergy pills, but you put it down the bridge of your nose and across, and it'll help with your allergies. So, but the main thing I use lavender for is if I burn myself, or if you get an insect bite, like a wasp or a bee sting, even mosquito bites. We, we have an army of mosquitoes down here. It helps with those too. But if you grab that pot lid without remembering to get your pot holder, you put your lavender oil on it right quick, you don't have a sore. Lid helps. Now it says 12 ounces of spaghetti, and I'm not going to measure. And I may go ahead and use all of this because this is a one pound package, but I'll. I probably won't because I like it to have enough sauce on it. So I would say that that's about 12 ounces. And I like to break mine in half. Y'all can do what you want to with yours. You know, and I used to think you put olive oil in your pasta to keep it from sticking together. It does, but you know what it'll do? It'll coat your pasta, and then your sauce that you want to put on it won't stick to it. So if you don't put oil in your water when you cook it, you, you season it all at one time, and your, uh, your sauce will stick to it. So I'm not putting anything in here to keep, this, to keep it separated. I'm just going to make it do like it wants to. I'm going to stir it around. Then I'm going to add me a little salt. Sometimes I'll put a clove of garlic in there, but right now I'm just going to salt it and let it cook about, I don't know, eight or ten minutes, I think, because I want it done good. And then we'll get on with the rest of the casserole. Okay, I've got to get my spaghetti. It's done, and I'm going to drain it right quick. And I didn't need any lavender this time. I remembered my pot holder. Go ahead and rinse that so I won't have that starch. It's hard to get it out of the. This is actually a rice washing uh, sieve or colander or whatever you want to call it. It's to wash your rice to get the starch out before you cook it. I've had several people when they saw me use it ask about it. Let me put this down because if I don't put something under it, it'll use it'll draw the oils up out of my butcher block. Alright, I'm gonna put my melted butter on it. and toss it to get it all. It says toss it to coat it good. You see, this is going to be the bottom of the spaghetti pie, so uh, you don't have to worry about your sauce not sticking to it because it's got oily stuff on it. This is going to be our bottom or our crust. Then the goodie goes on top of it. Kind of like peanut butter on a cracker. That bottom has to be there, but that top makes it good. And I thought I was going to use the June oven. And so I'm just now preheating because I got two pans to go in there and I want to do them at the same time. So I'm heating the big oven, but maybe by the time I get through making and talking, it'll be hot. We'll see. Okay, you kind of want to divide your spaghetti in half between the two. Hello. I'm going to get y'all moved back over where you usually are, where you can watch what I'm doing. Just a minute, and I'll get that camera back over. I'm going to try to even out my spaghetti a little bit here. Have about the same amount in each one. Well, pooey. 
and I like to make it kind of like a crust, go up the sides a little bit. <coughs> I forgot to whip my eggs. Just a minute. We need three eggs. My little ladies are not laying like they should, but I'm getting eggs along, so I'm not going to grow up too much. You know, I got six new ones from the old McDonald's farm where my grandson works. And I don't know if they're just in shock or what, but they're not laying as much as they should. Let me whisk my eggs real good. You know, I was supposed to add my You ever heard the saying you gotta lick that calf over? I need to put my spaghetti back in here because I need to get my eggs in with the spaghetti. So I need to toss in my my eggs and my parmesan cheese. This is your binder here. And I'm going to add a tablespoon of onion powder. You knew that. A teaspoon of garlic powder. Remember, I usually do three to one. And um, some Italian seasoning. Probably a couple of teaspoons of Italian seasoning. And I want that in the spaghetti. You want to stir it and get it. You don't want a bite of it with a tablespoon of that in one place. So you want to make sure you've got it evenly dispersed in there. Then you want to put your Parmesan. A cup of cheese. And I used some Parmesan and some Italian blend. Uh, the initial recipe, I guess Miss Kennedy liked Parmesan. Called for just Parmesan. Okay, now let's see if I can get this back in my pie pans. Maybe I can just kind of half it in here. To pull it up kind of like a crust. I think one of them got more spaghetti than the other one, but they're not yelling, so I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to put in our ricotta or our um, cottage cheese, whichever one you're using. Can y'all see what I'm doing? Because this is rocket science, putting this in here. Y'all need to be able to see so you know what to do. So this is where you would add a layer of cooked Italian sausage, pepperonis, they're kind of greasy, or ground beef that you've cooked in season if you wanted to add meat to it. And then on the top of that, you want to add spaghetti sauce. It called for three cups. My jar had four cups in it. So I'll just use what I need here and put the rest up to sop with. Probably use it all pooey. And then we're going to put the mozzarella on the top. 
about a half a cup per pie. I might have to get a little bit more wrap. That one got shortchanged a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more to this one and get them in the oven when it heats up. And then we'll have spaghetti pie here in just a little bit. I'm at 350. Make sure. They need to go in for about 40 minutes. We want all the cheese melted and gooey. So I'll set the timer and I'll see y'all in about 40 minutes. Okay, my timer went off, so I'm gonna check my spaghetti pies here. They look good, but they're bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Even though there's really no grease in there, the cheese has oil in it. So I've got a little bit of grease around the edges. I'm going to let them set and cool enough that I can dip a serving out. I'm going to show y'all how good they are because I'm going to taste of it. Got it all dished up and ready to, ready to taste of it for y'all. I didn't let it cool a long time. It would have come out a cleaner cut if I had. But I... Um, Need to get this video uploaded. Been another minute since I was here. And I'm not going to burn my mouth, so I'm going to blow on my own food, my own germs, on my own food, and then I'm going to eat them. So y'all don't have to worry about me blowing on it. Got a friend that won't even eat birthday cake because when people blow on it, she said they spit germs on it. I never thought about that, and I've eaten a lot of birthday cake. Look at me. Never made me sick. Mm -mm -mm. Tastes like a good helping of spaghetti. So remember, y'all can add some meat in it if you want to. But just like this, it's ready to go. Make you a salad, and you'll have a quick meal. Put you some of these in the freezer. And you'll have a kid-friendly or an adult-friendly. I don't think I've ever turned down pasta. So I hope y'all try the recipe and let me know. You might want to salute however you're supposed to do that. And think about little John John enjoying this at the White House. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. And I'll try to be back a little bit quicker with another recipe. Y'all take care. Shop the sales. Put a little extra stuff up. Pay attention to what people are saying there's shortages of. Sometimes it's created and sometimes it's real. But if you can get a jump ahead on some of it, you'll feel a little more secure with your pantry. Okay, y'all. I'm going to go cook something else and I'll see you soon.